These last few months, there's been quite a bit of talk about the alt-right, but there's still some confusion as to what exactly it is. Fortunately, all you have to do is pay attention to the ideas and the actions of its people, and what it is will become quite clear. Here are five revealing things about the alt-right. Hey there, YouTube. Skeptical Root. Steve Shives. Five revealing things about the alt-right video that he did that just is so damn wrong. And I haven't seen anybody else address this video, so I'm going to. So here goes Steve Shives. Five revealing things about the alt-right. And my response. Number one, the term was coined by white supremacists. The term alt-right was seemingly invented to allow people to gather under that umbrella and distance themselves from discredited extremist ideologies. Of course, that effort is wasted as soon as you learn that the term comes from the website Alternative Right, or Alt-Right, which was founded in 2010 by Richard B. Spencer, who is currently the president of the National Policy Institute, a far-right think tank which the Southern Poverty Law Center describes as a white supremacist organization. So make a note. Alt-Right was named by white supremacists, but people in the alt-right don't like being called white supremacists. First off, the Southern Poverty Law Center is on thin ice uh, as it is. Uh, they have not been, at least in my mind, uh, been favored much in the last couple of years. Uh, and with their recent uh, inclusion of Majid Nawaz and Ayan Hirsi Ali as anti-Muslim radicals, uh, kind of, kind of straw that broke the camel's back for me. So the fact that Southern Poverty Law Center calls NPI a terrorist organization or white supremacist organization doesn't hold a whole lot of water with me. It might have a month ago, probably not a whole lot, but just because somebody says that NPI is a white supremacist organization doesn't necessarily mean that it is, but I, that's not where I'm going to go with this anyway. I will point out, Mr. Shives, that feminism started off as a movement to what? Get women equal protection under the law? Now what is it? Oh, so that goal has not been achieved yet. Uh, rhetorical, what laws, what do women have that men don't? But really, and I'm not singling out feminism here, but stuff changes. Pepe the Frog is not a racist meme. It was used by some white supremacists and by people who uh, were just trolling and being as shitlords as much as they possibly could. That doesn't mean that Pepe is evil, white supremacist, uh, a tool of white supremacy. It is no more a tool of the white supremacy than a hammer or a wrench or a screwdriver or a table saw. Got it? Number two, it embraces social Darwinism. One of the alt-right's most influential intellectuals is Jared Taylor, who has said that the notion that certain races are inherently more intelligent and ethical than others is fundamental to the alt-right movement. In addition to Taylor's race realism, the alt-right is also preoccupied with the notion of individual strength. Its favorite insult, cuck, is directed at men who they have judged to be weak and people who suffer from institutional discrimination 
are derided and mocked for not being strong enough to make it in the quote unquote real world. White Western civilization is held up as the ideal while non-white immigrants and refugees are viewed as threatening invaders. So whether they call themselves that or not, they're social Darwinists. Write that down. There are people in the feminist movement, Steve, who think that men should be exterminated. There are people leading feminists who think that the true way to bring about equality for women is to kill all men or to lock them up in breeding camps, reduce their population to about 10% and only keep them around for the purposes of procreation. Books have been written about this type of stuff that are published and well-read amongst feminists. Does this mean that because these people are part of your movement, therefore that's what the movement stands for? You will knee jerk jump to defend these people as not holding true ideals of feminism or something like that. You know, you don't share these views, but these people can be feminists, but that's not what feminism means. And a lot of people in the alt-right will say the same thing about that Yahoo. How's it any different? Why is your group different than the alt-right? How is that argument that you're using any different than an argument that someone would use against feminism? And I'm singling out feminism because you're a feminist. And it is a, a group of people who have associated themselves with feminist ideals. It's a self-implied label, just like the alt-right is. You're, you're using the same tactics against other people that you think are crappy when used against you. That's dishonest. Uh, but in this sphere, honestly, I, I, I don't, uh, I don't see how this is surprising, I guess. Number three, it's anti-Semitic. One of the distinctive symbols of the alt-right is the echo, which is created by enclosing Jewish names within three sets of parentheses. Alt-right Twitter timelines and message boards also frequently feature anti-Semitic caricatures of some of their most hated targets, such as this one of Anita Sarkeesian. And let's not forget this anti-Hillary Clinton meme featuring imagery reminiscent of a Star of David, which originated on a racist Twitter profile and was widely circulated throughout alt-right spaces online and was eventually retweeted by Donald Trump. So let's go ahead and add anti-Semitism to the big board. Steve, Steve, Steve. The echo, not used by most people in the alt-right. By some, perhaps, um, because there was a bot that would apply that for you. And then people went and added it for themselves, whether they were Jews or not as kind of a haha -ha, shitlord kind of meme, if you will. Um, but really, what does, this, what does this have to do with anything? How is this tying in the alt-right with, uh, I mean, besides the fact that it's, it's, Sure, it's, you know, you know what? Damn, I screwed this up. I don't remember what you said. Oh, yeah, the uh, Hillary meme thing. Uh, the, the Anita Sarkeesian uh, picture. Uh, yeah, uh, people did that to her. And uh, to Sargon of Akkad, who is also a statue he uses for a symbol uh gave him the big junos and everything like that as it's referred to uh the the 
Trump retweeted the meme with uh, Hillary and history made most corrupt candidate ever with the Jewish star. You know, don't think that that was intended to imply that she was Jewish. I don't see how that ties in. I, I didn't understand at the time. Uh, this little Microsoft Paint changed it out to something else. Uh, but it embraced the the message that, that Trump was trying to get out there. Uh, so I probably didn't spend a lot of time thinking about it. Probably did not. I mean, he didn't get it from the white supremacist uh, Twitter profile. He retweeted it from somebody else who retweeted it. So down, down the line. I don't think you can blame Trump for that one. I know you want to. Don't think you can. Number four, it uses intimidation and propaganda to have its way. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Over the summer, a racist harassment campaign directed against Ghostbuster star Leslie Jones resulted in its ringleader, Milo Yiannopoulos, one of the most prominent figures associated with the alt-right, being permanently banned from Twitter. The alt-right regularly uses such cyberbullying tactics to attack and attempt to silence anyone that it deems a threat or otherwise a worthy target. It also mobilizes its troll armies to push false narratives, such as when it inundated online opinion polls with pro-Donald Trump votes following the first presidential debate. So let's add intimidation and propaganda. And since I've mentioned him twice, speaking of the alt-right's love for Donald Trump, that brings us... It's just stupid. Milo Yiannopoulos did not get banned from Twitter for harassing Leslie Jones. He got banned from Twitter for goading her on a little bit, but Twitter didn't like Milo, uh, didn't agree with his politics, and found the flimsiest possible excuse to kick him off of Twitter. Uh, there are Twitter archive, archives out there showing their exchanges between the two of them uh, and how much more aggressive and how much more vitriolic Leslie Jones tweets were to people uh, and how they indirectly, but more directly than, than anything Milo had tweeted, uh, were calls to violence against people who she disagreed with or people who she thought, you know, were doing her wrong and nothing happened to her because she's left-leaning, uh, social justice, I don't know, personality. It had nothing to do with Milo other than the fact that Milo was Milo. It was entirely due to the fact that Leslie Jones was a person tied to people who have political influence over the people on Twitter. Probably the best way to phrase that, I guess. Uh, I'm not saying that. I, I well, no, I will say that. I mean, she did directly speak to people at Twitter about her harassment, uh, while at the same time lashing out with incredible vitriol over the things that people were saying to her. Hers was far worse and resulted in an absolute lack of anything, consequence-wise, to Leslie Jones. Uh, she continued to retweet those things. In fact, I have read accounts of, firsthand or anecdotal, uh, of course, but uh, people who had their account suspended for retweeting exactly what Leslie Jones had tweeted out. And because of the nature of those tweets and what was said in them, and because this person was not a known good uh, liberal, their accounts suffered consequences. 
mostly brief, but consequences nonetheless. That's shitty. But that's not how I expect you to view that, Steve. <sighs> because... To number five, it's authoritarian. Many in the alt-right profess to love freedom of speech, but what they actually seem to care about more is having a guaranteed platform for their own speech and having the right to say whatever they want, whenever they want, about whoever they want without ever having to face social or legal consequences. That's why the alt-right threw itself so unreservedly behind the presidential candidacy of Donald Trump, a man who disdains political correctness, which is universally despised throughout the alt-right, proposed mass deportation of non-white immigrants, and threatened to throw his political opponent in jail should he win the election. These are surefire applause lines among the alt-right. These people make a show of championing liberty, but what they really seem to want more than anything is to see one of them installed as a dictator who can then force society to conform to their narcissistic expectations. So, let's add authoritarianism, and I believe that all of these various qualities of the alt-right are connected to each other because they are connected to that core value of white supremacy. So let's go ahead and connect the other four to white supremacy on our illustration and we'll see if we can figure out what the alt-right actually is. Alright. That clip ends up with him drawing a swastika and thinking he's clever. Um, it's not Steve. I, I, that, that was, I saw where it was going at this point and I, I cringed and I whinged when you actually went so far as to actually draw the swastika and associate the alt-right with Nazis. That, hmm, Godwin's Law, dude, you lose when you invoke the Nazis. That's the corollary to any a conversation on the internet, given enough time, will invoke the Nazis or Hitler. Because the corollary to that is the first person that does that automatically loses the argument. Ta-da! You lose. Not, though, just because you invoked the corollary of Godwin's Law, but because you're so freaking off on this. Yes, conservatives tend to be authoritarian, but Steve, you are an authoritarian. You. You are an authoritarian. You want people to do what you want, when you want. This platforming stuff is, is stupid. People on the alt-right want to have the same right to say what they feel or what they think that liberals have. That they're not looking necessarily for not having consequences. Legal consequences, yes. They are looking to not have legal consequences for expressing an opinion. That is one of those foundational things in the Constitution. I think it's the First Amendment, as a matter of fact. Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right of the people to peacefully assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. That's what they want. They want that abridging the freedom of speech. If liberals can go somewhere and make a statement, they would like to have that same chance to challenge that perspective and to put forth their alternative um, opinions. And that should be allowed on public forums. The fact that it's not says a lot about what people think about the idea of the public and public opinion. So you want people to be able to shut down conversations. You want people to listen and believe and not to question you want people to basically be like you want them to be. And if they're not, 
then you have all kinds of labels you will apply to them. Racists, bigots, homophobes, white supremacists, social Darwinists, anti-Semites. You'll use intimidation and, and uh, propaganda to silence people. To take away their platform so that yours is the only one that's heard. Because you think that you're right. Well, Steve, as someone on the left is here to tell you, you are not right. <laughs> you are not right. There are some things you are right on. And I'm Steve, I'm not even going to sit here and tell you that, that I disagree with a lot of what you say. But the things that you say that are wrong are so wrong. They're... They are almost zealotous and religious in your fervor to hold these views. You used to be an atheist. You still would claim to be an atheist. But you also claim to be a skeptic. And I don't see a lot of that anymore. Listen and believe is what they tell you in on the knee of your pastor. It's not what they teach you in science class. Question, be skeptical. Have an idea that differs from the commonly held belief. Understand that belief, but challenge it. That is skepticism. That is the scientific method. Something you profess to be a, fa a fan of. And instead we've got this crap. Talking about how the alt-right, a group that I don't agree with, but certain people that are on the alt-right, I think they have every right to, to express their opinions. Even when I know they're wrong. Even, especially when I know they're wrong. I want them to get out there and I want them to talk as much as they can. So I can go out there and point out, walk behind them and say, look, this is crazy and here's why. And for lay out my rational and reasonable arguments for why what they're saying is wrong. So that the people who hear me know they've heard both sides. They've heard the point and the counterpoint. And they can make rational conclusions that, yes, I have now heard this thing. It will no longer be a surprise to me. I no longer have to just accept it because I know that that's not all there is. And that is the best way to have a educated populace and especially an educated electorate. But, damn it. It's just so disappointing, Steve. I mean, I've gone back and watched some of your back catalog. And, you know, this, never mind. You know what? You're just a different person. And now you've, you've gone off the rails into crazy town. And I don't even know what to say anymore. So, link to the video down in the description. You want to go watch the original? Uh, I don't care what you do as far as commenting to Steve. He's not going to listen. He moderates all of his comments. If he doesn't like what you're going to say or doesn't think you have a rational argument, he just deletes it. So, whatever. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Share this video with your friends. Tell people that Steve Shives is an idiot. And like I said, I, I'm, not, I'm not an alt-writer. Uh, I voted for Hillary. I would have voted for Bernie if I would have thought that Bernie had a chance to win in the, the primaries. Although, no, that's over. <laughs> the election's passed. There's still a marginal chance that, that Trump won't be president. But I'm just hoping that Trump will not be the president that... He won't be the same president that ran the campaign. That he'll be a better person. So that's it. I might even cut that Trump part out because it's not, not, doesn't matter. That's it, everyone.
Goodbye and hello. As always. If it doesn't.